Hello, this is the Just Because Buzz, Thread Tales number six, my version of Lost Tooth. Thanks for joining me. I'm excited to share with you some things that I've um, stitched and some shopping that I've done over the past two weeks and just um, some enjoyment that I had with a stitchy friend. So wanted to say too that I've gone over a hundred subscribers and I'm very excited about that. Thank you for subscribing and thank you for commenting and thank you for liking. And at the end of this episode, um, we will do a share. So stay tuned. All right, I'm going to get right into it. Some old FFOs. I'm going to go back to one of the first things that I really enjoyed stitching and that was uh, stitching on bread cloths. <clears throat> So, first one, this one says, Happy Thanksgiving, and it's a bread cloth that kind of has a um, natural look to it. It's got some other fibers besides just the stark white, so it's a little fallish looking. So I have that one, and then this one is just real simple. But I like the way they did the recommended stitching along all the way around the border of it. I think that was kind of pretty, but very simple, but it looks pretty on your table. And with the brick cloths, I learned pretty quickly that you really need to line your basket with the brick cloth, then line that with um, a towel or a napkin that um, you could wash that would, um, if you got any butter or anything like that on that, you could wash that one and keep your bread cloth nice. So that's just a tip if you ever decide to make the bread cloth. So those were fun. They were quick. Um, they were easy stitches. And so I enjoyed those a lot. More on those in a little bit, my whips. So recent FFOs, if you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen these, but if not, I hope you'll enjoy seeing them now. Uh, Mill Hill Pumpkin Pie, and this is the pattern, and it um, is initially recommended to stitch or came with the kit that you could stitch it on perforated paper. So this is like an example of perforated paper if you're not familiar with it. Um, it's just kind of like a piece of cardstock with the holes already punched for stitching with cross stitch. So I decided instead to stitch it on a piece of linen. So <clears throat> I've shown it when it was unfinished, but this is my fully finished. I decided to do a pillow and I just used quilting cotton for the sides here and a piece of vintage lace for the bottom and the side and just offset it and then some quilting cotton on the back and a pretty bow on top and that bow was repurposed i found some um of the kind of like potpourri type products that you put in like bowls um, or towers for decorating and the box the plastic box came with this real pretty ribbon and so i had saved that from my fall and put it on there That was a fun finish. And then I also showed you recently the um, needle books also on my Instagram account. And one of them is going to be used for the Great Pumpkin Sal that is being hosted by Cynthia Brew and Olivia at Pumpkin Hollow Quilts and Christy at Crosshatch Quilts. They're all hosting the Great Pumpkin Sal. And then the raffle that's associated with that is to benefit the Freedom Shield Foundation to assist those that are coming out of human trafficking. It gives them an opportunity to get back on the right foot. And so the raffle through Cynthia, um, you can go and look at her. She's got a special floss tube just on that. And it explains about how you can get your name in for the raffle. But um, she reached out to some of us and asked us if we would be willing to make um, a prize. 
and so I decided to do a needle book. And so last floss tube I showed you the unfinished part of the needle book, but now it's all fully finished. And this is the front of it. Used a little ribbon closure with a button and then the little binding and then the back is a pieced stitching and then the big stitch quilting. And then when you open it, it's got a center page with the felt and then the, the fun um, trim that has the inches on it with some vintage buttons. And then I did kind of a broderie purse type thing where you cut out the um, Im image from the fabric and then I um, adhered it to the felt. A little different that I did with this, this one and this other one that I'm going to show you is I actually lined the back of the felt so it kind of looks like a, a cute little book. I felt like it, was, it finished it a little bit more. So this is the one that will be a giveaway for that uh, fundraiser for the Freedom Foundation. And then this is the other one that I made that I'll be keeping. And I want to share too that these pumpkins and the blackbird and the vines, these came from a free pattern on owl forest embroidery. And the free pattern's called Pretty Pumpkins. So there's a bunch of different pumpkins and gourds on the pattern. I just took some of these images and did my own stack. And the same here, I did my own stack and then added the little bird that was in the pattern. Um, but I've also seen the pattern fully stitched and it's really pretty too. So I'm gonna check that out. So on this one, I did a ribbon closure and the center is very much the same, some vintage buttons, and then I did that same technique where I finished the back of the felt so it kind of looks like the inside of a book cover. And I pinked the edges, so, and then there's the back of it. So those were fun to finish. All right. Also, on the needle books, I used Amy Simbaldi's tutorial. She uh, has a little uh, company called Nana Company, and um, that tutorial I found, and I had pinned it on my Pinterest board, and so I could refer back to it. Um, and like I said, the changes that I made um, were just this inside cover. And then on this, this one is close to the size that she um, was used in the tutorial. And then I just adapted it a little bit for this size because this is a wider piece. And then added an extra row of locks on the back to make uh, the back fit the front. So just adapted it a little bit. But her tutorial is really, really um, straightforward and easy to follow. All right, so I wanted to share with you now and um, that I have some whips that I wanted to share with you. Um, one of them is, let's see, another bread cloth. So in the past, I've showed you this these bread cloths, um, the bee and the sunflower, and it's out of this Leisure Arts Bake a Batch of bread cloths. And there's quite a few designs on here and the sunflower and bee here on the front and then on the back there's quite a few designs and right now I'm doing the pumpkin that's here on the back. Well for some reason this time I decided to look and just see how many threads they recommended that you use on the bread cloths and <clears throat> I, I went back and looked at these and it looks like I used two threads on these and I thought they got really great coverage. Uh, I thought they were really pretty and they weren't stiff. But this, the book actually says use three threads and I did that on the pumpkins and it is really stiff. But I still like it. I, I'm, I'm still going to go forward with it and all. Um, but I thought that was funny that 
I made a decision a long time ago when I made these other ones to just to do the two threads and this one I decided to do the three threads and it is really stiff but I'll proceed I'll keep going so that's one of my works in progress and let's see the Mill Hill ABCs so um, I did make it to craft gallery a couple of weeks ago drove down there and just had a really fun time at their store and they had gotten all but four of the treasures in so um, I haven't added them yet but um, this is my little bag from the craft gallery that has all my treasures in it and that will be um, a project I'll try to get back on and get those on there and then the other four treasures were backwards so I'm just waiting to hear back from the craft gallery and Paula and see if we can get the rest of them in and get that finished. I haven't changed the date on it yet because I'm afraid if I change it to 2020 and those other treasures don't get here before the end of the year then I'll have to change it again so who knows we'll have to see how that goes. All right so did finish all of the Noel Naturals if you've been watching me for a little bit um, I've been stitching the Noel Naturals and this is the January 1999 for the love of cross stitch and this all 11 of these and so I did finish the Holly and Ivy that was the only one left from the last of the 11 that I hadn't finished when I had my last floss tube so I thought that was really pretty I wasn't sure how it was gonna all turn out and I thought why are these these crazy greens back and forth and then I realized when I looked at the wording again it's holly and ivy so it's both of these green Christmas um, plants that we're fam familiar with and so it made more sense but when I was first stitching it and pulling the threads for those I was like boy this is gonna look really strange even though I had the picture to refer to it didn't quite come off the same way in the picture and um but anyway i like it so um this is ready to be fully finished um waiting um to get a few more things out of the way and then i hope to try to make a banner out of it like i've shared before i'm gonna back up for a moment i did finish fully finish this uh mug rug and this is a lori holt uh, pattern i used a six inch block out of one of her farm girl vintage books and then I um, used the pattern for the mug rug out of her Christmas vintage book and this will also be a gift for the raffle that Cynthia Brew is hosting and I think she's already shared this one on Instagram as one of the gifts and then eventually she'll share the needle book as another gift too so um, this is also one that I fully finished put the binding on all right so now I'm gonna move into what I would like to stitch during the great pumpkin sow I've been really trying to stay disciplined and not start a whole bunch of things um, since I finished the Noel naturals and knew that I wanted to participate in the great pumpkin sow um, so I, I kind of started doing some other quilting things and trying to finish up some quilting projects or at least work on them while I was waiting for October to start. So I'm going to share with you some of the things that I uh, plan to um, stitch on in October for the Great Pumpkin Sow. So <clears throat> the whip for the break cloth, I will continue that and then Kathleen at Stituation Normal had shared a while back, maybe two or three episodes ago, about this chart called Pumpkins for Sale. And I thought it was so pretty, and I just went and looked at it and didn't buy it, but kept looking at it and thought it was pretty. And then, anyway, went back and forth and um, was talking to her about it, and we decided we were going to stitch it. So... Uh, I went ahead and purchased the pattern and 
Then I decided, okay, what fabric am I going to use? It kind of looks like a blue fabric, but then the pattern says it's kind of a, it calls for a 36 Edinburgh linen. And it kind of said it was a line, it said it was a limestone pale green. But in the picture, it kind of looks blue and I kind of liked the blue idea. So I had two blues in my stash. One is this blue and it's kind of washing out. It's kind of a dark kind of um, gray blue. I don't know, it's, it just looks kind of, it's light in the picture, but. And then this blue is light and it's actually called Murano Wedgwood. It's a 30 count. And I had a quite a big piece of this. So then I had the idea, well, maybe I would tea dye, try it out and use Priscilla and Chelsea's method of tea dyeing. And so on the, on this side, it's that darker blue. That's this one. And then on this side is the lighter blue and that's this one. So I don't know. Now I'm really, I'm not, I'm not sure. And these are the threads that are called for that are DMC. You can, you can use either, they had uh, Gentle Arts and they had um, Color and, uh, let's see. I don't know if that's color and classic color works. Um, and then they had DMC. They had a combination of all three of those, or you could do all DMC. And I'm thinking of doing all DMC, although I do have some um, older crescent color um, that I might use as well. But I would love any opinions if anybody has an opinion on fabric or um thread and again this is the front cover pumpkins for sale so i just think it's just a cute pattern i love the little sheep in the back <laughs> anyway so i can make a decision pretty soon about that And then the next one is one from Heartstring Samplery. And um, it was a free pattern last year in November. She offered it uh, 2019 as a free pattern. And it's called Thankful Every Day. And you can get it on her website. And it's not the best picture of it, probably. Probably my printer, maybe the ink is not doing the best job there but it is um, a basket full of pumpkins and I decided to treat myself when I went to the craft gallery to get the called for fancy floss because I had never really purchased any other than the few that I do have uh, I guess I have purchased a few but these are the colors I'm gonna try to hold up the fabric here and I chose this apple blossom fabric, this linen. Um, again, the lighting's washing it out a little bit. Let's see. I'll put something behind it. it might help. There you go. Um, <clears throat> so there's just seven colors for the chart. So I'm going to try it on this apple blossom and see what I think. So again, that's Heartstring Samplery and Thankful Every Day, her free pattern from 2019. And then yesterday, Beth from Heartstring Samplery put on her Instagram a pattern that she is making available on her website. It was in, um, I don't know what you would say. It was, it was kind of, it was used at a retreat at a, a, a previous time. 
and now she's put it on her website as a PDF that you could get. And it's called Everyday um, Pumpkin Eat. Pumpkin eating. It's hard to say. And so I just thought that was so cute. And it has a little girl. And I loved her long brown hair. And um, it's actually two pincushion patterns in one. And so I went ahead and um, uh, bought the PDF. And then she had a limited number of kits that had the thread and the fabric. And I was able to get one of those. So that'll be coming in the mail. Um, so that was, that was kind of fun. And I do enjoy pumpkin spice things. I know there's a lot of people that don't enjoy it, but I do. In fact, Katie and I made some French toast on Sunday night and it was pumpkin French toast and it was really good. It, it was nice fall flavors. I really enjoyed it. And then the other thing that I have, it's actually coming in the mail too. When I was watching Just Keep Stitching, they made uh, mentioned a blackbird design that Hershner's had that if you called them you could get the design it's a giving thanks table mat and I called them yesterday and ordered that all you had to do was pay for the chart they were waiving the shipping cost so um, and the chart was like $4.99 I think $4.99 so um, I thought it was a really pretty chart it had a big turkey on it and I believe it had a pumpkin on it, and then it had the wool felt tongues around the mat, and so I treated myself to that, and so I'm looking forward to that coming in the mail. All right, so I wanted to share some quilt things from the past and let you see some of those things, and this is just going to be real quick, not, not long at all, so some fun pot holders and these are paper pieced but pretty simple you know the pumpkin's pretty big and then the corn love the corn especially like the corn fabric and then eggplant that bright purple And then this is a dip. Well, actually, it's the same pumpkin. I just quilted it differently. And then it's a batik fabric, so that was kind of fun. I love this fabric on the back. That's. I think I used that on a couple of them. Yeah, I used that on the back of the eggplant. All right. So this was a Nancy Halverson fall fell. And so that was a fun one too. I'm gonna be putting some of these up. I've got some of my fall decorations up, but I need to put the rest of them up. And this is a crazy bright tea towel with chenille. So that was fun to make. I've washed it, so then it's got the crinkle look. <laughs> and then my sweet mama made this. This is a Shabby Fabrics pattern, and it's a table runner, so it's got four pumpkins on it, and it's just beautiful. I love it. And those are the four pumpkins. Very pretty. Thank you, Mama. All right, we'll applique. So had some fun with my stitchy friend Ann from Finley. She drove up last Thursday to Garden View Farms and we did a U-Pick and then we stitched on one of the eyeglass cases from my new pattern and we just had the best time. I just really enjoyed her company and visiting and we had the farm to ourselves outside of Ellie and some of uh, her dad, maybe her sister. Um, we were able to walk around and cut flowers and visit, and it was just really, really nice. A beautiful evening, and then we went into the Blossom Studio that they have, and we stitched on uh, the eyeglass case. So, in case you haven't seen, I have a pattern that's new, and I'm selling them, and this is the pattern, Sunny Days Eyeglass Case, and do the sunflower or the hydrangea. And this is 
one of the finished pieces. And this is the hydrangea finished piece. I'll show you my prototypes. These were this is kind of fun to look at. So this was the first. This is the prototype. And so there's the comparison. That's kind of fun. And then this is the prototype, and then this is. That's kind of fun, huh? I like seeing that. And then if you wanted a pre-cut kit, I have pre-cut kit kits. All the pattern pieces are cut and ready to sew, including the background. So and there's the sunflower. So contact me via my email and I'd be happy to ship you out some projects and great Christmas gifts. I mean, quick to stitch because you don't have to even cut anything out. It's already cut, ready to go. And then this is an older wool applique that is by Bare Roots, and it was a fun stitch. Little pieces, <laughs> but fun. A little candle mat, so you put a little candle right there. And a glass votive is usually what you do. Or a little bowl with candy in it, or whatever. All right, so haul. So I went to the craft gallery, as I had mentioned, and uh, got the fancy floss that I mentioned for one of my pumpkin projects I wanna do, and then the Mill Hill Treasures. And then Paula's standing there and she goes, you know, there's one grab bag left here. You ought to take it. And when I was there for the garage sale day, she had made up all kinds of grab bags for people and the grab bag was $10, but inside the grab bag, um, she put a value on the outside, letting you know that what was inside was way more than the $10. And so I was gonna show you those charts real quick. So the very last grab bag was this one and this is what the value was, $193. So I paid $10. So I took the last grab bag off her hand. So I'm going to reach in here and grab these out and show you real quick what they are. And it, if you've watched my channel, you know that I love bees. And the very first pattern in the stack was this one. The blue flower. And the name of it is Gathering Honey. So I thought that was pretty fun. The verse says, How doth the little busy bee improve each shining hour and gather honey all the day from every opening flower? So I thought, well, I think it's meant to be. And then this is a needlework press. A little sampler and it looks like Martha Hards and age 10. So wow, I don't know if I was stitching that well at age 10. And then this is White Lion Designs Button Collector. That was an interesting pattern. And I've always wanted a Quaker and now I have one. A little different in that it's long ways, but it has some fun motifs in it. So, this is number, it says Quaker sampling number three, and the samples are from Ackworth, they were inspired from Ackworth schools, and this is from With My Needle. And then hands-on design, a proper young lady. I thought this was neat because I really liked this. There's a um, pretty nice illustrated instructions on how to make this. Um, I'm not sure what she called it. What'd she call it? Maybe a pin cushion? I guess she called it a pin cushion, but it was squared. So I kind of like that. And then this is going to be our share. 
So Halloween Gate. This is by Imaginating and Company. And so your keyword that you'll want to say in the comments would be gate. And then Old Crows. This is from Imaginating as well. Lots of pumpkins there. And then from Rosewood Manor, Wise Owl. See a squirrel. See a red bird and some robins. Little bunnies. That's a cute one. And then this is a complete kit. This is a Hummel. MJ Hummel. Hummel. Complete kit. So that'll probably be a future giveaway. And then from Amy Bruken Designs. Cute little cupcake. And it says yummy. And then Kesslin's Love Letters. The rose. And that was finished in a Sudbury House box. And then Kesslin's Autumn Dew. That's really pretty. And this was framed at uh, the craft gallery. So that's pretty cool. Also Kesslin's A Wedding Heart. This was also framed at the craft gallery. And then Topiary Garden by Kesslin's also framed at the craft gallery. Purple Rain by Kesslin's framed at the craft gallery. And then Pickle Barrel, Sea Princess Sampler, cute. Starfish Wishes, this is also by Pickle Barrel. Hello Spring, those are some fun colors. Pickle Barrel, and the last one, Pickle Barrel Festive Season. So how fun was that to open? So I really enjoyed that. And then um, Lori at Mischief, Mischief, Mischief Stitcher. That's hard to say. Anyway, she had been to Walmart and she found some Reed Drummond fabric. And I didn't know that Reed Drummond had any fabric. And I found that I liked it. And it has a really nice feel to it. So I bought this fat quarter. I think I want to make some mug rugs and then these fat quarters to go coordinate with it. So that was fun. Found some gingham at Hobby Lobby that was on sale. Bought that. When we were down at um, the craft gallery on the way home we stopped at Jeffrey's and that was um, a big antique mall so that's pretty fun and I had wanted a Rolling pin that had red handles because I wanted to do some finishing with a red handle rolling pin. I found that for a good little deal. And then found this interesting, this was an insert, I guess, into a magazine at one time. Uh, it's got 1961, but it's got all these cross stitch images on it. It's huge. It's like a big, um, the pattern inserts. Um, it's got like a cat. Um, sampler and you can see so I got this for a dollar it might be fun just to look at the images maybe use them occasionally or something and then I found these two little silhouette pieces that I thought were kind of fun and I've already recharted them if you if you care to comment I would love to know your opinion on the little silhouette cross stitches and if you would if anybody would ever be interested in um, stitching them. Um, they're on point, so that was interesting in itself because the, the hangers are up here at the point and the design is stitched on point, so I, I thought that was interesting. So I've already charted them. I haven't stitched them yet, so I would love your opinion on that if you have one. And I was watching Lost in Floss, Barb, this morning, 
and she showed some of her old fall finishes and one of them she showed was in the in summer sampler by the the blue ribbon designs and I had started this one and it's funny she had a start on it too and then I think she ripped it out and started again anyway I had started it and realized that I wasn't going to get the same look as what the chart was because of the fancy floss and this was before I really realized what fancy floss was it's charted for gentle art sampler thread and it does give the DMC conversion but it cautions you that you may not get that same look and I had started it with just doing the little blocks around each like starting here in the center somewhere and started making the blocks so that I could fill in and stopped and so it was fun to see her finish and hear her story about it and now I'm excited about trying it again um, the colors are a little bit muted for me I like brighter colors so we'll just see and it won't be something I would start this fall but um, it might be something I would like to try to get going for next year so all right I'm trying to keep it to close to 30 minutes and I'm a little bit over already so I want to say thank you uh, thank you for coming Thank you for visiting with me and um, sitting through um, my finishes and my works in progress and uh, my exciting news about my pattern. And I, I hope that you've enjoyed today. If you do want the share or are interested in the share, use the word gate in the comments and I'll use the random comment generator that they have and come up with a winner and get that shipped out to you and announce it next It'll be in two weeks. And then um, I always want to leave you with an encouraging word. And one of my favorite songs that um, Tim McGraw put out was Humble and Kind. And kindness right now is really important. And being humble is always important too. So I would just say go through this day. Go through your week. Um, being humble and kind whenever you can. Thank you again for visiting with me. Take care. Bye.